In this video, we're going to be setting up our widget for the solo option. Now, if you recall from the Word Award main menu, we click solo, we're set with new game and mission select. And from there, we can choose Nazi zombies. We're going to just kind of skip the initial options and move right to this menu essentially. So we're going to have just a couple simple buttons and when they're hovered over, we're going to have events that are going to change the image on the right side, display the name of the map, as well as a quick little description of it. So this will be very simple. So let's have a little back button. So we can get started on this. So if you recall, we have all of our current stuff in a widget switcher. So we have our canvas panel main that houses pretty much everything you see here. So from there, we can go ahead and just add another canvas panel into the widget switcher. I'm going to call this one CP underscore solo. Compile save, and we can get started. So let's look back at this. So we have our just a quick little list of buttons. I'm only going to do two just for testing. Because I got to create actually I'm going to go ahead and duplicate our map so that way we can have quote unquote two maps. So first person CPP, maps, first person example map. I want to go ahead and actually move this over to our maps folder, like so. Delete the old maps folder and create a new folder. Call it Nazi Zombie. Yeah, just Nazi zombies. Move it into there. I'm trying to keep everything nice and neat. And I wanted to go ahead and duplicate this. So copy and paste, or you can control W to duplicate. I want to change the name to map one and change this to map two. So I want to make map two just a tad. Actually, I guess I can just add a couple little boxes and crap. So geometry meshes, a couple little cubes. Just just so we can see that it's different. So I'm going to save it, save all, and now we have our map two. So map one, map two. Ignore the lighting needs to be rebuilt. I'm not going to bother doing that just yet because there's no point. All right, let's go back to our main menu and continue. So we have those two maps. So now what do we need to do? We need to create a little list of the map names. So we're going to use a vertical box again. Drag it down onto the canvas panel. I'm going to anchor to the left side, just like before. Do the center left. And give it a rough size. So we're going to have it be... So I'm going to do this. The far left side. Let's see. I'm going to do about... I think that's actually the same distance away. So this was... 160 off to the right. Do the same thing again. And the width, increase that to 350. Yeah, that looks decent. Offset top zero, offset bottom zero. All right, so if we look, we have it down quite a ways. from the top. So we're going to follow along with what we did for our CP main. And here we had, we're going to actually minimize all these, just keep them out of the way. So the offset at the top was 80. We're going to follow along and do the same thing. So 80 and 80. Let's double that, 160. 160, just keep it a little lower and more compact. And here's where we can add the rest of our info. So this is going to be 
a button, put some text on the button. All right, that is not a button, that is a border. There we go. And add text on the button. So button is going to be B underscore map one. And the text is going to say map one. I'm going to do the same thing in horizontal, al horizontal alignment is going to be to the left. And we're going to give it some padding. So we gave this a padding on the left of 30. So we're going to do the same thing. Just like so. And we're going to copy the same uh, alpha, so 0 0.15. And 0 for the red, green, and blue channels. So now we have our map, or map button for map 1. So I'm going to copy it and paste it in again, change it to map 2. And it's going to be B underscore map two. And give it a top padding of five. And we're good to go. So if we look at the events for the button, we have on hovered. So when we hover over it, just like here, we want the maps to change. And when we click, we want to load that map. So we can have, eventually, if you watch my online subsystem tutorial, where I did a map selector, I created a uStruct, and that contained information, such as the map image, the map URL, meaning the pretty much the path to load the map from, as well as the map name. We will eventually be doing something very similar to that, but we're also going to add a pretty much an F string for the description. So we're going to create, try to create these dynamically, hopefully in the future, if I remember. But for now, this is going to be kind of our placeholder as we're just getting the layout set up and functional. And from there, we will continue on with everything else. All right, so now we need image of the map, the map name, and text. So let's see here. We need an image. I'm actually going to create a size box and put the image in that. Okay. I'm going to give the image a variable name. So it's going to be I underscore map or solo map image. It is not supposed to be inside the vertical box. There we go. I put it inside as a widget switcher by accident. So let's see. We want to anchor to the where? The center, right? Figure out about how big we want it. Maybe a little bigger. Right, so it's going to be 600 by 600, something like that. Position it about here. It's a little above the, if I can even move it. There we go. Right, let's do negative 800 for position X and negative 450, negative 400. I like negative 400. Our size is good. All right, that's where I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to drag out a new text. Text is going to be called text block underscore map name, or solo map name, sorry. Get it about the same size as these. Right, 
I set its anchor to be the same. Get there, call it map name, and another text for the description. So this one's going to be tv underscore solo map description. Set it as variable. And that goes mostly down, kind of about like that. Let's see how big's the size box. It is six, 600 by 600. So we need this one to be 600. I'm going to do one, 160 for the, on the y-axis. Anchor it to the right. And they're already positioned quite nicely. So I'm kind of liking that. So now we're going to set up our main widget to be functional with that. So when we click solo, we're going to use the widget switcher and switch to the canvas panel underscore solo. So that is very simple. So on clicked, we have our widget switch. Going to drag it out. We're going to do set, or what's it called? Set, set active widget index. Now it's starting at zero. So for example, we have our camp widget switcher. Then we have CP main, which is index zero, and CP solo, which is at index one. So we want to go to index one, like that. And now we can see if it moves us. Oops. Oh, the active index was set to zero by default. That's my fault. So we click solo. It takes us to this page. So now we need a simple back button. Uh, is that inline? No, it's eh. I want to actually include this. So I want to drag the that down. I'm going to do 30 for the offset at the bottom. And add a, another button. Here, actually, I'm just going to copy and paste the button. Change the map or the text to back. Uh, make the button actually invisible. Set its justification to the right. And I want to put it all the way down at the bottom. So vertically aligned bottom. All right, that did nothing. Let's fill do now. All right, so let's be the top. Let's do 500, 700, 710, 730. 740, and that puts it right there at the bottom corner, roughly. So 745, and we're pretty much there. All right. So we have our back button at the bottom. Let's click the button. Gonna give it a name. B underscore solo back. And give it an on clicked event. So I want to move this on clicked up to here. And I want to move the rest of the clicked event down. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to copy our widget switcher. We're going to set the index back to zero. Compile and save and play. So click solo, click back, solo back, it's going back and forth between the widgets accordingly. So now we have the base of this set up. We can move on to the cooperative portion. 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to actually, we're going to continue with the solo, and we're going to just start making this. We're going to give it some functionality. Then after that, we're going to move on to the cooperative and setting that up for functionality. And then we will actually be kind of ready to move on to actually programming the sessions behind it all. So, I uh, will see you then once we start doing that.